and Roku. Just download Changing a Generation streaming channel on your device. If you're a first-time visitor, type FTV in the comment section. We thank you for sharing. Our theme for 2024 is It's Go Time, taking I Am's message everywhere. In need of prayer? The Changing Generation Active Prayer and Donation Line during virtual services, 1-877-211-0342. Sundays, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and Tuesdays, 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Press option 1 for prayer or option 2 for donations. Changing a Generation Step Call. Join us every Tuesday at 7 a.m. as we step shifting toward everybody praying. The dial-in number is 774-460-4400. Need a midweek boost? Join us in person or virtually for Changing a Generation's Tuesday Night Word Explosion at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Do this in remembrance of Him. Join us every second Sunday for our Lord's Supper, Holy Communion and Baptism during our 11 a.m. service. The highlights for the month of March are Palm Sunday on the 24th during our 11 a.m. service, Holy Symposium on Tuesday the 26th during our 7.30 p.m. service, special guest, Bishop-elect Victor DeMond Tate, First Mount Pleasant Baptist Church, Atlanta, Georgia. Closing the month with Resurrection Sunday on the 31st during our 11 a.m. service. We're celebrating. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. Changing Generation Next Generation Youth Ministry Service, Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. A space to grow, develop, and learn the principles of Jesus Christ in an age-appropriate environment. Bring your youth out to get involved. Changing Generation Think Out of the Box Sunday School General Sessions for all ages takes place each Sunday at 10 a.m. to stay informed of the growth and launch Bridge to Discipleship, Lead Step, School of Prayer, Prophecy, and Deliverance, and the Prophetic School of Ministry are also available via Zoom. Email christianeducation at cagmin.org to register or to get more information on these awesome programs. Staying connected to the community, Changing Generation Food Pantry is open every Thursday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m at 4191B Snapfinger Woods Drive. Same parking lot as the church. Please make sure your trunk or back seat is available for donation placement. Attention members, to report a death, sick, or confined member of the ministry, or if in need of counseling, please call corporate at 404-284-8865. Tuesday through Thursday, from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Full Gospel Baptist Church International Conference, July 9th through 11th in New Orleans. See the travel info on the screens. The trip departs July 8th for the conference. Registration is not included. Register at fullgospelconference.org. For more information, see Pastor Sheila Griffin or Minister Tanya Clifton in the lobby. Bishop-elect T. Delbert Robinson will be consecrated as a bishop during this year's conference, and we want to show up in big numbers to celebrate his elevation. There's also a special celebration luncheon being planned for greater and changing members in attendance on July 12th at Greater St. Stephen. Luncheon tickets are $75 each. March is Women's History Month celebrating the contributions women have made to the United States and recognize specific achievements women have made over the course of American history in a variety of areas. Also note that March is National Nutrition Awareness Month. As we prepare for worship, we want to remind you of all the ways you can donate and support Changing a Generation. To make a donation by mobile giving, message CAG to 54244. Givelify. Click and search for Changing Generation Full Gospel Baptist Church, Decatur, Georgia. Cash App, dollar sign C A G Now. Use our secured website, C A G Now.org. Or mail to Changing a Generation 
Full Gospel Baptist Church, Post Office Box 360368, Decatur, Georgia 30036. To stay connected for all updates, you can text CAG NOW to 22828 to sign up for eBlast or visit CAGNOW.org. Change. 
Our scripture comes from Psalms 34. It says, I will bless the Lord at all time, and his praise shall continue be in our mouth. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for this session. We thank you, God, for our preaching program, God. We thank you, God, for those that are here on tonight. We thank you, God, for our speaker, God. We pray to God that you would speak through her like never before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We honor God, the Father, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, our comforter, to Bishop-elect Dr. T. Deborah Robinson, First Lady Elder Jasmine Robinson, Overseers Bishop Paul S. Morton and Deborah B. Morton, to our first assistant pastor, Prophet Raymond Stott, a second assistant pastor, Pastor Sheila Griffin, a third assistant pastor, Pastor Micah Aker, and to our church council, Elder Seth Brown, to the College of Elders, Overseer Robin Ware, and our co-overseer, Jane Scott, Ministry Alliance, Elder Micah Aker, Overseer, Minister Rika Brown, our co-overseer, and to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, good evening. What an amazing opportunity to teach on this, on this evening. Our speaker tonight is none other than our superintendent, Elder Roxy Harrison. She's a superintendent of Sunday School. She's a part of our College of Elders, and she's also a changed woman. Put your hand together as she comes to bless us with the word. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Good evening. With protocol established, and she's already praised, so I don't have to do that. So go with me to the book of Daniel chapter 3, verse 25. Daniel chapter 3, verse 25. And it reads, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. I want to teach for a few minutes from the subject, who is this fourth man? So during Israel's captivity in Babylon, three Hebrew boys refused to bow to the golden image of the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. Therefore, he ordered them to be put into a burning furnace. The decree from the king was bow or die. Shortly after the young men were placed in the furnace, the king was astonished to see a fourth man in the furnace, along with the three men that he had ordered to be killed. But the King James translation that Nebuchadnezzar said the fourth man looked like the Son of God, but there are other many Bible translations that say the sons of God. The fourth man looked like the sons of gods rather than the son of God. Yeah. So the expression son of God can also grammatically be rendered as the son of God. In biblical Aramaic, the plural noun el ahin may be assumed to have the same force as Elohim in biblical Hebrew, which can be rendered either as a plural God or as a singular God. Most Christians throughout history have understood the words in this text, Son of God, to refer to the incarnate Christ. What does pre-incarnate Christ mean? It means the existence of Christ prior to his incarnation as Jesus. But who is this fourth man? One thing is certain, Nebuchadnezzar called the fourth, the fourth person in the fire a man. And I'm saying since he's a man, surely he should know what a man looked like. But how could Nebuchadnezzar see the pre-incarnate Christ? Since Christ is God in physical form, therefore we can conclude perhaps that Nebuchadnezzar saw a theophany in the furnace. So what is a theophany? A theophany is a sudden, temporary appearance of God. The word theophany comes from the Greek word theos meaning God and the Greek verb meaning to appear. So there are many theophanies noted in the Old Testament which is the temporary sudden appearance of God. But one of my 
favorite theophanies is found in the book of Genesis chapter 16 where Hagar meets the pre-incarnate Christ. Oh, you remember Hagar, the black slave girl from the south side of Egypt who married Abraham. Sarah gave, Sarah gave the Shumite bond woman to Abraham to marry because what? They needed her womb. In Genesis chapter 16 is where Hagar encounters a theophany. She ran away from the house and the angel of the Lord found her in the desert and asked her, where have you come from and where are you going? Hagar said, I am running from my mistress, Sarah. Then the Bible says, the angel of the Lord said, go back to your mistress and submit to her. I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. Now the angel of the Lord comforts Hagar, but he promises that he will increase her descendants. Now this is something that no angel can do of their own accord, which means this is not just an angel speaking. This is God himself. More importantly, now come on, what brings it all together and causes us to know that it is a theophany is Hagar's response. She said, you are the God who sees me, for I have now seen the one who sees me. Clearly, Hagar had an encounter with God in a physical form, and since Christ is God in physical form, this was a theophany. So let me just close it out a little bit and come to a conclusion about this theophany. Let me say this. Only when Christ became flesh in Bethlehem did the world witness the ultimate theophany, the ultimate appearance of God. But who is this fourth man? Well, where did Jesus come from? The New Testament is not the first place that we meet Jesus. A person, although a person reading the Bible for the first time could easily finish the last verse of Malachi and begin to read Matthew only to feel blindsided by the sudden announcement of the birth of Jesus Christ. Like, whoa, where did that come from? From the last chapter of the Old Testament to the first chapter of the New Testament, it appears as if the pre-incarnate Christ abruptly just breaks into human affairs. <laughs> but that's not true. That's not true. If you are paying attention to the Old Testament, you will find that by the time you meet Jesus Christ in the New Testament, it's not actually the first time you have met him. You have already been introduced. Who is this fourth man? Most people grasp that the Old Testament contains many prophecies of Christ. Paul writes in Galatians 3 and 24, Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ. In other words, far from being mostly silent about Jesus, the Old Testament is a vivid source of revelation about him. Jesus verifies this himself in Luke chapter 24, verse 44, that says, Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses uh, that was written by the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. But who is this fourth man? Well, let me tell you something. If you dig a little deeper into the Old Testament, you will discover that God laid out his plan of salvation from Adam to Noah. From Adam to Noah, every person's name reveals God's plan of salvation for humanity. God hid the plan of salvation within the names of the people. Good God Almighty. Furthermore, in addition to his plan of salvation that he laid out between Adam and Noah by every person's name revealing his plan, 
He also paid, had the plan of other than salvation. God embedded his design on how we should live our life on, human, uh, on earth. And through the names of Jacob's 12 sons, I'm talking Old Testament, that is how we also learn about how we should live for Jesus. For example, Jacob's son Reuben means, see my son. Simeon means, hear him. Levi, cleave to him. Judah, praise him. Dan, God is my judge. Naphtali, wrestling. Gad, fortune. Asher, blessed her. Issachar, his reward will come. Zebulon, dwelling of honor. Joseph, God will add. And my favorite is the last son, Benjamin. That means sit at his right hand. Because when it was all, Jesus had finished it all. He sat at the right hand of the Father. So we were destined to sit in heavenly place in Christ Jesus before he came to earth. Let me wrap this up. Allow me to answer the question. Who was this fourth man in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? It was the pre-incarnate Christ in the furnace. David declares in Psalm 24 and 8, Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. I was him. It was him, the pre-incarnate Christ. Because the pre-incarnate Christ appeared in the furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They walked out of the furnace. No harm to their bodies. Not a hair on their heads were burnt. Their robes were not scorched. And there was no smell of fire. Okay, this fourth man in the fire. But let me ask you this question. Do you know the fourth man? Yeah. Hallelujah. What a word, what a word, what a word. And one thing that she just that I really learned from this, what that the offer me. The offering, the temporary sudden appearance of God. We just thank God for coming out. That word right there just really blessed me. Thank God for you, Elder Roxy. We thank you for coming out and supporting our preaching program. We are here every Tuesday at 7.15 p.m. We will now transition to our midweek work explosion under the leadership of our steam pastor, Dr. T. Bishop-elect, Dr. T. Delbert Raleigh. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Come on and stand to your feet. And tell the Lord, I love you, Lord. Anybody need the Lord? Anybody want to praise the Lord tonight? Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. With all of our hearts, we love you, Lord. With all of our souls, we love you, Jesus. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. 
this world, more than our family and our jobs, our spouses. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, lift your hands in this moment in his presence. He's here. Let's invite him in the room. Let his train be on this There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your all-living hope. Your presence, Lord. I taste it. Shame is burning. Your presence, Lord. Come on, right here. Say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory. 
I want them to continue to sing that part because I want you to do it. <laughs> this is called participation. We're not, we're not just putting our eyes on people, praise the Lord. We, we're getting in the presence of the Lord. And, and we want to experience just his glory, just his presence. Praise team, come, come with that little part again. Yeah, yeah, that part. Let us become, let us become Come on, become aware. Become aware. That's when you'll experience it. Let us we're taking I am's message every single place not just the physical place but even inside of us we're taking I am's message and listen what a blessing it will be because this coming Sunday our overseers will be in the house we certainly thank God for our leadership and thank God for our overseers and we certainly do thank God for our first time visitors whether you be in house or online. Of course, if this is your first time in-house, we want to stand and acknowledge you. But also, if you're online, we want you to put FTV in the chat. That stands for First Time Visitors. Someone will definitely wrap their virtual arms around you. Come on, changing a generation. Let's thank God for all of our visitors, whether they be in-house or online. What a blessing for them to stop by and take some time and be with us. And listen, join us on Sunday, March 24th. That's going to be Palm Sunday. Our very own Bishop Elect and Lady J will be in the house. Yes, we thank God for them. And we certainly know it's going to be time in the Lord. And March the 26th, please mark your calendars. You need to be out at 7.30 p.m. Because we're calling it Holy Tuesday Symposium. It's going to be a blessing. The theme this year is the journey to the cross that's coming from john the 12th chapter in the 27th verses led by our very own college of elders with our very special guest bishop elect victor tate is sure to be a blessing you want to mark your calendars and you want to be there and then on on i'm sorry march 31st not january march 31st at 11 a.m that is resurrection sunday at 11 a.m with our overseers Come on, get your life together. Invite your family, invite, invite your friends, invite your neighbors to come on out and be blessed and save the date. We're in a celebration time. At 70, it's my runway. That's what Pastor D says. She says, celebrate on a yacht with Pastor D for her 70th birthday. That's going to be held June 6th and the 7th in Miami, Florida. You can scan the QR code on the screen if you want inform more information about that. Let's thank God. Come on, let's thank God for one of our, our co-founder, Pastor D, our overseer. And listen, CAG is still always doing things in the community. Of course, every Thursday, they're open the food pantry every Thursday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., 4191 B. Snap Finger Woods Drive. That's in the same parking lot as the church. 
right out in the parking lot. Come out and be a blessing volunteer. Or if you have a need, certainly come out and get that need fulfilled. And attention all members, the travel packages, we've been talking to you about full gospel for the Baptist Church Fellowship trip to New Orleans. That is closed as far as new people coming on. But please, sir, please, ma'am, make sure that you continue and finish your package. We're gonna receive at this time the very own Bishop Elect and Lady J. Let's give God some praise for them. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you so very much. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. What a sweet spirit of worship. Yes, Holy the house. Spirit is welcome. He is welcome. In this place. Can we give God praise for sounds of change Amen. tonight? God Thank you, you Brother David. Thank you, Brother Gabriel. Job well done. Great to see you, Brother Fuller and uh, Minister Taylor. Amen. Can't leave nobody out. Every, look around and tell them Lottie Dottie and everybody. Lottie, everybody. Our overseers, how much do we love them tonight? Amen. Come on, make noise. We love you. Double honor to whom it is due. We are so grateful to God to, for them tonight. And then, of course, we're always giving God praise for our virtual church. Facebook and YouTube and wherever you may be watching from. Can we thank God for them tuning in tonight? Come on, clap your hands. Amen. And then I got two more I want you to be thankful for. Everybody that battles traffic on a Tuesday. My God. Come on, where are my Tuesday Ooh, traffic Lord. battlers at? Come on, look around and give God praise Come for on. everybody that made it in the house of the Lord. Yes. And then certainly last but not least, can we give God praise for our first lady? Bless you. Amen. Bless Elder you. Jasmine. No, right, that... right before she comes, I want to also keep this before you. I failed to say it on Sunday, but Tuesday is just as good. We want to keep Elder Derek and Sister Gretchen Starks in our prayers Amen. as they have gone through the process of uh, celebrating the life of their mother in love. We had an opportunity to share and minister to them today. And so as a church family, he's family and I want you all, she's family, both of them together, they're a part of us. So let's keep them lifted in prayer in this time and season. All right, let's receive our first lady. Amen, amen. Well, will you help me give God praise for Mr. Goldtime himself? Come on, our senior pastor, Bishop Bless Alec. You. Come on, y'all make him feel real good. Woo. And before I go too far, yes. before I go too far, did I say, I said it already, go. You Keep said going. it already, Keep my going. goodness. Are you still basking in the glory, come on, that we experienced on my Sunday? God, my my God. goodness, God met us here and I am just woo, still basking in the presence. I pray that you soak it all up and I feel like there's an overflow on tonight. Come on, somebody, you feel an overflow. There's a glory in the room because Holy Spirit is welcome and he's always welcome here at the changing church well just a few more announcements we've started this uh, we kicked it off this weekend but we want to let you know that we are set to celebrate the elevation of our pastor bishop elect t delbert robinson yes yes and we have been telling you about it and now the tickets uh, are here and you're able to secure your ticket for the elevation celebration on friday july 12th in new orleans louisiana at greater saint stephen it's a greater change event so if you're a member of either one of those churches, you are invited. It's for you and only you. And you can purchase your $75 ticket uh, with Prophetess Sophia Corker and her team in the lobby. You can purchase tonight. You can purchase Sunday. And I've already gotten word that they are going fast. They're going fast. Wow. And because we are splitting them between the two churches, you better get in where you can fit in because they have their half and we have our half. So be sure to do that as soon as possible. It's going to be so special. It really is. And I'm excited, not just about the festivities and to be able to fellowship as a family together, but I'm so excited that our leader who has moved on up quickly, come on, he went from general overseer and swooped on up to bishop elect so fast and he is definitely anointed uh, for the task 
and then I'm excited to announce this because Pace has been in operation yes. at the Greater St. Stephen Church, but now it's a fully in effect at the Changing a Generation Church. And this is Pastor D. Yes, make some noise. Pastor D already is building her team and she's leading it here as well. And this is the announcement 2024, it's go time. And it says, and guess where else we're going? To the polls, come on, shout it out. Ooh. To the polls, if you're a voter, as believers, we are to be good citizens, so we want you to participate in our voters registration drive. If you're not registered to vote, if you know somebody who's not registered to vote, if your grown child isn't registered to vote, they can meet us here either Saturday, March 23rd from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the food bank, or on Palm Sunday, March 24th, following our worship service both days, right here at Changing a Generation. And each person who is newly registered, listen closely, will receive a proof of registration card and their name will be placed in a drawing for a gift and a prize. Now here is the good part. The drawing will take place right here at Changing at a Resurrection Sunday service on March 31st and $1,000 will be distributed among 16 people. So you must be present. I'm telling you, y'all better get them in if they need to be registered. You must be present with your card to win. Let's keep up the pace. You know what was funny? I was watching the crowd. Everybody, when she said $1,000, all Eyes the people bucked. who were in the phones, they came up for a split oh, second. Oh, they came up off those phones. <laughs> the money. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen. But no, most importantly, we know that this is a big year. It's an important year, and we've got to take that seriously and do what we need to do. And let me say very clearly to you, if we don't vote, the decision will be made for us and I, I think you have to really poise yourself now I know that we as a people hear me good here we as a people have gotten into the position where we feel as though our vote does not matter there is so much voter indifference everyone say indifference yeah. it's called voter indifference when you say hey I don't have anything in the for the election it doesn't do anything for me but if you don't do it this time around this is a historic moment that we have to make it to the polls so every soul has to make it to the poll we want everyone in this place you got to keep up the pace that's what this voter registration drive is all about and if you have or if you're struggling with voter indifference just remember your pastor is pushing you not to be indifferent in this time and this season. This one is different. Tell your neighbor, this one is different. This one is different. And then tell somebody else, it's go time. It's go time. So we got to go, go to the polls. We got to get to the polls. Amen. 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 And then finally, I don't want us to take this for granted. If you have lost a loved one, yes. we want you to know uh, in order to report a death, a sick or confined member of the ministry, you can call our corporate office. You can call our office, which is right here at 404-284-8865. They'll get that information and disseminate it uh, to those who need to know. And you'll, you know, make it to the announcements. Uh, as appropriate so that we as a church family can pray for you and cover you. We're going to get ready to worship God in giving tonight. Amen. Yes, let's clap our hands and give God praise for that. Our deacons doing an awesome job serving the people of God. They're moving about uh, in-house for you to be able to receive an envelope if you need one for your giving. In addition to that, let us also be reminded, thank God, for all of our full gospel covenant partners as we go toward our 31st international conference in New Orleans, July uh, 9th through the 11th. We thank God for you because you are really working behind the scenes to make the whole vision of full gospel work in and around the country. With that being said, uh, First Lady is going to come back and share the ways in which you can give, but I want to say to every tither, as you receive your envelope, as you position yourself uh, to give, whether it's electronically or literally, I'm going to invite you to stand after First Lady has presented uh, the ways in which we could give online, and I'll pray the blessing over you. 
Amen. You can text your offering. You can text CAG to 54244. You're welcome to use Givelify. All you have to do is search for Changing a Generation Atlanta. You can use Cash App dollar sign C-A-G now. Uh, but if you give this way, we only ask that you include your full name and the category in the memo. Do not leave that out. You can also give via our secure website at www.cagnow.org. And then finally, if you're old school, you can mail in your gifts to P.O. Box 360-368, Decatur, Georgia, 30036. Every tither is my time, is my turn, whether you're in-house or even at your house watching virtually, wherever you may be, you're standing as a tither. Can we give God praise for amen, these that are amen. standing tonight? Thank you so very much. We certainly appreciate you uh, both in-house and virtually. Father, by the strong name of Jesus, we ask now that you will open the window of heaven, pour out the blessing of favor, influence concepts and opportunities. Lord, rebuke the devourer for our sake. And we give you praise, honor, and glory for it now. By the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Tithers, you may be seated that you may sow right where you are. We know it's been a long but a blessed day, <laughs> so you can receive the basket at that time. God bless you, Tithers. All of us, though, who are giving tonight are making this confession together with me. Will you repeat after me? Lord, it's not a debt. Lord, it's not a debt. Uh, it's a seed. It's a seed. I'm sowing it. I believe you can grow it. Because of this seed, the quality of my life will be made better. Come on, shout it out real loud. I don't need another chance need another to mess up chance. doing the same thing. With your offering in hand, your phone, say, this seed, this seed is my better chance. chance. Sounds of change. Amen. And it's going to be big. It's going to be How many of you are believing God for a big blessing? Don't fool me. Come on and give God praise for it. Amen. I failed to say this, but we got to give God praise for our minstrels as well. They play so skillfully upon the instruments. Brother Mark, we thank God for you. Elder Carlos, we thank God for you. And we have a visiting drummer tonight. Uh, the implicit is always Brother Ed is on the road, but he leaves us in great rhythmic hands when he's out. So let's thank God for our band tonight, and then Elder Roxy, my goodness, took us to seminary tonight. <laughs> Who is this fourth man? Hey, man, if I was talking mafia talk, I'd say, whose man is this? What a wonderful expression tonight. Bless you, woman of God, so well studied, and we give God praise for it. Well, I was sitting there looking, not back over my life, but looking over my curriculum, and I realized tonight is the only night I'm going forth in the month of March. And so, uh, because Holy Symposium, and let me put a shameless plug there, I want you to get you and everybody else, everybody in your house, and bring them to Holy Tuesday Symposium. How many of you can bring somebody with you to Holy Tuesday Symposium? Wave at me. Some of y'all ain't waving. I need you to be in the house for Holy T Tuesday Symposium. It'll bless you now. And listen, let me ask it this way. How many of you are believers? Where are my believers? Oh, yeah, I can do that. I'm a believer. Symposium, Holy Tuesday, is the believer's holiday. You want to be found in the house of the Lord during this blessed time and season. So all jokes aside, I want you to really press uh, to make the sacrifice to be in house. All right, let's learn the word of God with the time that we have tonight. Ready, set, go. Uh, uh, just one housekeeping item that I want to do before I get into the word I have a QR code 
that you can scan right now as it is on the screen that will literally help you to follow along in our curriculum. Uh, if you leave that up there for them just for a second media, again, we're a QR code culture. We want to be a technically advanced church. It's going to help us save paper, but it's also going to help you to study the Word of God. So if you will go ahead and scan this lesson, uh, this is the curriculum and the uh, flow of tonight that I will use. So you can go line upon line with me. Uh, once you have put it in your phone, just a gentle reminder, save it in your phone. Make sure you also save it in your phone so that when you're looking at the Word of God, you're able to go back to uh, this lesson and see where we, are, where we were and how we were moving. All right? As we move forward, I got some that are still scanning. If y'all could just put it back up there. I got two or three people that have their phones up still. Uh, and, and they say, oh, Lord, it went away. Now, if you're struggling with it, open your camera. Go on and open your camera, and your, cam your smartphone will do the rest for you. And if uh, all else fails, uh, Sister Faith is serving as a, an on-site technical director. I see everybody in her section is going to her. Uh, I'm looking, anybody struggling to get it? Anybody else? All right, I have one, but I see, okay. I see help is on the way, all right. I see she's the young person in the middle. So if you, I'm going to leave it up there. Now, uh, just leave it on the screen till the struggle is over for a second. <laughs> and then uh, in a couple of seconds, we'll go uh, forward full speed ahead. So tonight, I'm going to teach you uh, a few things that I know are worth repeating, uh, some of which what I'm going to do is you have the curriculum in your hand, but I want to give you some backdrop thinking because go time now, it's a part of our vocabulary, a part of our vernacular. Y'all still uh, struggling with the, uh, the code? Good to go? All right. Thank you, media. Come on, give media a hand. Amen. They're working with us tonight. All right. So we got go time in our vernacular, and I don't want us just to get hung up on the cliche of it all. I want you to be matured in the word of God, because though it is very uh, popular in language, it is heavily based in the Word of God because the Word of God is our, both, watch it here, it's our manual and our magnet. When we talk word talk, I just believe that the Holy Spirit gets involved and begins to give you irrefutable words. Everyone say irrefutable words. That means no one really can deny you or contradict you when you are talking about the word of God. So therefore, I want to really interest you. Now, I gave you three things. It's kind of my formula that the Holy Spirit gave me whenever I am preaching, which is my style of ministry uh, that I've been using for years now. But it really has begun to make sense to me even more as I go into the 30th year of my ministry. It's three things you'll always do when you hear this format of uh, ministry that I do. Number one, we'll always look into passages and verses. Passages and verses. My ultimate goal is for you to learn the Bible so that you have a clearer understanding. Some texts will be simple, some will be sophisticated, but even the sophisticated texts, they become a little more plain to you as we go through the word. So you're learning passages and verses. Number two, you will learn principles and values. Principles and values. The word of God really is built line upon line, and here's a word, precept upon precept. Precept is an old English word for principles. Principles can be broken down into values. The things that you value, many of us in the room, here's an easy one. How many of us value family? All right, here's an even easier one. How many of us value finances? All right, y'all waving down here. Yeah, right. Go on and put two hands up. Try it again. How many value finances? Okay, then how many of you value your future? 
So those are just three basic values that we can hone in on. And all of a sudden, when we have the same principles and the same values, we share something in common with one another. The word of God causes us to share things in common with one another. We might not live in the same area. We may not have had the same upbringing, the same background, et cetera, et cetera. But the word of God is the commonality for the believer. Do good unto all men. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 10. But the Bible is specific, especially those that are of the household of faith. So treat everybody right. But when it comes to my brother and my sister, as a believer, we have responsibility to find our word of God commonalities. Number three, number three, and this is probably the biggest and the brightest of them all. We always want you to levy power and victory. Everyone say power and victory. Now, what does power and victory look like? So after we've looked into passages and verses and we've shared principles and values, the whole house should go up and everyone, say everyone, everyone leaves with power and victory. Now here's the caveat. How much power and how much victory you get is according to your faith. But if you will watch these passages and verses, if you will find yourself in these principles and values, everybody, come on, say everybody. Everybody is going to leave with power and victory. Tonight I want to minister, I want to teach, rather than not minister. I did enough ministering on Sunday. I don't know what was wrong with y'all. That seat will never be the same for me ever, ever, ever again. That's my chair. But uh, I want to teach about the ministry of go time. The ministry of go time. All right, so uh, right, I'm just going to go down the, curric the curriculum. I'm not going to go anywhere. Well, I might have to deviate a little bit to get you to see some things. Uh, the basic principles and values of how to minister go time, what I'm giving you, you have heard so many different versions, or here's a word, iterations of go time. You have heard from Bishop. You have heard from Pastor D. Didn't you do your, did you do anything on it? Hey, okay, but, but you said something on a prayer line. Yeah, yeah. We've heard Lady J. Uh, and, and even in singing, uh, go ye therefore and teach all nations. You, you, yes, and your first lady sang it as well. Because I, I remember specifically. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all be saying it, so why can't I say it? I remember specifically, we kicked off the year with the Go Time message and really cemented, so we were trying to cement some things quick as possible because of the scheduling this year. So we've heard all of these different things, but let me give you my take on Go Time as the chief visionary again. And that's the uh, position I was preaching from on Sunday being the chief uh, visionary of this vision. So again, it, I, I kind of tapped on Exodus chapter 3 on Sunday. So I'm just going to give you uh, some backdrop verses that are not explicit on your curriculum. Uh, Exodus chapter 3, verse number uh, 14 gives you what I call the I amness of God. So that when you hear taking I am's message everywhere. Come on, say it. Taking I am's message everywhere. Now stand right here. When you hear that, that is originating from Exodus chapter 3, verse number 14. In the month of April, my goal will be to come back and to really dig deeper into this whole idea. The, it then starts, so it starts with the character of God as I am, it then goes to Matthew chapter 28, and for a reference point, you can look at verses 18 through 20, but really we want to focus in on verse 19. There are three words 
in verse number 19, and for the sake of the camera, I'm moving over, y'all, because I don't want, I want the, I want people at home to be able to see the board clearly. There we go. All right, great. Verse number 19, three words there. Go ye therefore. So I don't want you to go too much further other than understanding where the whole backdrop of the lesson comes from. And there it was on the board, chapter 18, verse number nine, uh, chap chapter 28, verse 19, the A clause, King James Version, go ye therefore. Everyone say, go ye therefore. Now, just before you think I'm making this up, theologically, this is called the Great Commission. The Great Commission. If I spell anything wrong, I'm not a Kila, it's not a B. <laughs> womp, womp, womp. All right, y'all didn't want to laugh at my joke. So, the Great Commission. The Great Commission is where Jesus, as he is leaving the earth in Matthew 28, verses 18 and 19, his last words, if you will, his last will and testament he gave us the great commission of go ye therefore, teach all nations. We are to train and to teach, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's what makes us what is called Trinitarians. We believe in the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I don't want to insult anyone's intelligence, but just uh, kind of... Bear with me as we go over some simple biblical things here. Say, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are three in one. That makes us Trinitarians. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's important that you understand that uh, doctrinally so that you know where we are as a people. So therefore, when he said baptize them, then he goes on to say, and then teach them to observe all things that I have taught you. So anytime you hear anyone preaching from any area of the Bible, that is a part of the Great Commission because we are teaching you to observe the teachings or the words of Jesus, which takes us back to that whole issue of principles and values. We value the words of Jesus as our principles or the principles by which we live our lives. We live, so repeat it after me, I live my life according to the words of Jesus. Okay, if you don't do that, start tonight. If you don't do that, come to the altar, make it official, and then give us the opportunity as a church as a Christian community to further assist you in changing the quality of your life. That's why you connect with the church. That's why it is so important to us that you understand what go time really means. Because now I want to talk to us who are careered Bible readers, spiritual veterans, if you will. Let's not take it for granted that because we know what we know that everyone around us knows it as well. So every now and then we have to break down and go back to the basics and tell people that you need, so to the, to the, to the career believer, you need to give people your testimony in an effort to entice them or to provoke them. I'm using words that folk who have been through the Bible understand. The Bible says, let us provoke one another unto good works. So the word provoke can also mean entice. It can also mean motivate. So we are in the world as special agents to entice, provoke, motivate people to come to the altar and to connect with the Lord's church. That's for the matured believer. For those in the room that say, hey, I'm new to this. 
And I'm really, really trying my best, and those that are watching me, to give Jesus a try. First of all, we applaud you. We congratulate. Come on, let's encourage them. We encourage you. Give the Lord a try. Your life will be the better immediately. But you have to make it official. Let me pause parenthetically and make a very poignant statement. The church is not whack. I don't care about the context that you heard it in. I don't care how you put it. A church can be whack if it is not properly represented. But the church of the Lord Jesus is the strongest institution and organism on planet earth. God is the greatest power, and the church will not be defeated. Okay? So my suggestion is to take the advice of a seasoned senior prophet in the body of Christ. Be on the winning team. Okay? And believers, we cannot keep putting the Lord's church down. Your job got problems. But you keep showing up <laughs> and you know exactly why and so do I. If I go past my time, y'all going to start doing this. Go back and watch the replay. <laughs> Pastor Rob, you know, Bishop let us out a couple of seconds earlier. You're going to have to, uh, hey, I got to go. <laughs> but with the Lord's church, you can't keep, well, I don't know about them people. No, I'm going to start saying, I don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> right back at you. The Lord's church is not whack. I don't want to get stuck there, but I have to speak to the culture of the day because uh, some things we just shouldn't say, even if we feel that way. Some conversations we should not have with non-believers. The Bible says there is no fellowship. I'm talking to mature believers now, and hear what the, what the, hear what the prophet is saying. There is no fellowship with Christ and Belial. Now, if you ain't read the Bible, you don't know what I'm talking about. So, but if you have read that even we're living in a day where you have to watch your conversation with other people as well. You know, there's just certain topics that you don't talk with, talk about with people just to get cultural attention. You just don't do that. In fact, the book of Proverbs talks about you don't yet grab a dog by the ears and play with their ears. Why? Because that dog will turn and bite you. So there's some conversations, if we're not careful, they'll turn around and bite us. Amen. You know, and, and I want to say this in the presence of our music ministry. I'm not the best singer I've ever heard, but when I get into a singing pickle, I throw the mic to singers. So some of our singers ought to throw the mic back to the preacher. When's the last time, when's the last time you went to your general doctor, right? You go to your general doctor and you have a toothache. You don't want your general doctor working on no root canal. You want to go to the dentist. <laughs> so throw the mic back to the preachers and let us who know the word handle the word and we'll let you stick to the runs. And I don't care. Tick my talk, say it in the comments, uh, whatever you got to say, and then come see me at It's Pastor Rob on any social media platform. Come see me. Acts chapter 8. <laughs> I don't want no smoke, y'all. Y'all be bucking me up trying to, you know, no. but you got to give the devil what he came for. You know, it just is what it is. All right. So, uh, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about three things, first of all, some principles and values 
that are the chief motivation. So again, uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse number 19, go ye therefore is the chief motivation of go time. That's the motivator. The words of Jesus are our motivation. Say it out loud. The words of Jesus, they pump me up. Come on, say it like you ain't going to say chief motivator when you leave here. I want to get into your spirit and your memory. The words of Jesus pump me up. Hey, come on, say it strong. If Jesus said it, I can do it. So when he said, go ye therefore, that's a motivator for every one of you. How many of you believe I got the gift of an evangelist? Are there any self-admitted evangelists? Okay, so when you hear what Jesus said, it does something for you. It gets your, I mean, it gets you really stirred in your spirit. Okay, now here's three things or three main principles and values that I want you to commit to memory. And at some point in time, you should be able to kind of just jot them, just go back to them at a moment's notice. So number one, on your curriculum, number one, it's important you see that they did what? They went where? Where did they go? They went everywhere. Now, when they went everywhere, this is so important. Going everywhere is found in Acts chapter 4, ver chapter 8, verse number 4. The Bible says, New King James Version, and I chose the New King James Version so that you could see the word everywhere in proper context. When or therefore those who were what? Scattered. Went where? And what were they doing as they went? Now some of y'all said, uh-uh, hold it. I ain't doing no preaching. <laughs> that does not mean that you're going behind the pulpit. This is the proper sharing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So whether you're behind the pulpit you don't have to be an elder, a minister. You don't have to be a, an official of the church. Preaching is a fundamental practice of all believers. So, number one, this message of go time is meant to be taken everywhere. Everywhere you go. Now, it is important that you understand when we say take it everywhere, that don't mean get up in the morning talking about, all right, here I go. I'm, walk, I'm walking my way to New York City. This is not Forrest Gump. Remember, Forrest just took off running. Didn't know where he was going. He said, the next thing I knew, I was running. No, 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 no. So when we talk about everywhere, we're not trying to just get you in some uh, a pickle to take off going. I was preaching early in my pastorate in Los Angeles at a very small church. Uh, it was about 50 seats I had, and I was doing, oh my goodness, it's the late 90s, and I have this revelation on how God wants to relocate people spiritually. Everyone say spiritually. And I'm, oh, he's moving. <laughs> I mean, I'm 20 and going, I probably was on a pew. There's a good chance I was on a pew because I'm in my 20s. And I mean, I probably could, I was back flipping and all kind of stuff. He's going to move you. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. Say, yeah. The whole church goes up. Great Sunday, right? Well, because my church was the size it was, I knew all my sheep by face and by name. I knew every member, right? I look up, two, three weeks have gone by, and I miss one particular person. I'm looking for this lady. I haven't seen her. And I'm starting to get a little nervous because I'm like, did I say something in the sermon that turned her off? I know everybody's work schedule. I know their mamas, daddies, everybody, you know. So I haven't seen her. All of a sudden, she pops up about two or three weeks after that particular Sunday. And I'm like, where have you been? She said, well, to be truthful, Pastor, you were preaching about relocation. I went home, packed my bags, and left town. Tell your neighbor everywhere don't mean everywhere. <laughs> All right. Only go places where you can do the following. You only want to go where you can do evangelism. All right. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse number 5. 
2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 5, King James Version. Look what Paul tells Timothy there. He said, but watch thou in all things. Tell your neighbor, keep your eyes open. Endure infliction, afflictions. Tell your neighbor, you're going to go through. Talk to him, prophesy. Tell him, you will go through. Come on, keep, uh, that wasn't strong enough. Tell him, you will go through. But you will come out. All right, let me, let me pause for my babies in the room, my babes in Christ. The Christian lifestyle, ju doing things Jesus' way, it does not guarantee you're not going to go through some hard things in your life. In fact, it's going to seem harder because you probably were given a false expectation that when you go with Jesus, it ain't going to be no problems. So you can't walk away and say the church is whack, <laughs> his people are whack, and Jesus makes me sick. Tell your neighbor that's a no-no. Now while we, see, we seasoned believers are looking like, what? But you know what? This is quickly becoming the theological position of the world. The church doesn't work. His people, they, they worse. I, uh, Christians are worse than people in the club. Yeah, that's what people say. And watch this. Here's a word that they become. I'm, I'm not teaching about this. This just dropped in my spirit. People become ag... I want to spell it right so I don't get it wrong because the world is watching. <laughs> people become agnostic. They don't know what they believe in. Not atheists. They believe there is a God but they just don't subscribe to organized religion. So you have to be aware of how to defend your faith. Your faith never said it's going to be easy. Faith is not easy. Faith is just as hard as your job. Faith is just as hard as a relationship. Well, then what is the difference? The difference is when I go through, I have the words of Jesus as a guide and a compass to make it through and out of whatever I'm going through. Worldly people put a gun to their head. Worldly people jump off buildings and commit suicide and things of those nature, of that nature. I was preaching about it on Sunday. Worldly people have a habit. They have a habit of having to use drugs, sex, alcohol to anesthetize the pain of what life guarantees go another go another go another worldly people create other worlds to escape to that's why people say oh i, I just gotta go go to the club and get it out my system i'm not saying don't have a good time but you have to oh my god where am i you have to be careful believers of a thing called witness if you were seen in the wrong place at the right time, it can hinder your witness or your testimony or even your ability to take I am's message everywhere because there will then be places that you cannot go because if I go there, I can't be a believer. I got to be my alter ego. Another time. All right. Paul told Timothy, <laughs> I'm just teaching the word tonight. I promise you, I ain't got nothing up my sleeve but my arm. I ain't even got sleeves on. So, you know, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 5. Paul tells Timothy, endure afflictions. And while you're doing that, do the work. Everyone say, put the work in. Now, as you put the work in to do the work of an evangelist, look at the fourth thing that will happen. You will make full proof of your ministry. The Lord will begin to do some things in you as you do things for him. It becomes a fair trade-off. Let me try it again. A fair trade-off. Okay. Now, 
let me use myself as an example because I pray for the sick and I lay hands on people and they get healed. It does not necessarily mean that when I get sick, I just lay hands on myself and fall out and get healed. That's not how the fair trade-off works all the time. It is my healing is according also to my faith. Okay, let me go another route. When you need the Lord to bless you, you don't just give money to get money. The blessing of the Lord is based on your faith. So when I bring the Lord's tithe, 10% of my earnings before taxes, stay with me, proverbially, the window of heaven opens and this unexplainable phenomena called the blessing. Now, if you're taking notes, here's just a little, a little thing for you. The blessing is not this. The blessing is not that. The blessing becomes what you need the Lord to do personally based upon your faith. So it really is saying, Lord, I trust you with the 10th. And he says, okay, I'm going to protect the other 90. There's an insurance that goes on to the 90%. How many of y'all have ever taken your money and you're like, I don't know how I'm doing all I'm doing with the little bit of money I'm working with. Yeah. So then the more you give to God, then you find yourself doing way more. You're, and then he starts adding to you because you can be trusted. I only got a few minutes. Now, so as I do evangelism, the ultimate goal is for me to become an example. Okay? Now, I want to say there for my audience at home, uh, put that passage in Acts chapter 8, verse number 5. And look what the word of God says in the New Living Translation. In fact, read it out loud with me. Just the first three words. Ready? Read. Pause. Try it again. Pause. Put your name there. Say your name out loud. Say it. So the ultimate goal is for you and I, watch it here, to become an example of how evangelism everywhere works. However, you can't just go be an example without having an example. All right, and hear me good here. And even with the example that you have, you cannot go emulate your example because you can't imitate your example per se because what if they've done something in their life that you really are not called to do in your life? All right, back to my singing career. <laughs> I'll be wanting it sometimes so bad. And I'll be looking between Minister Taylor and Lady J like, which one of y'all am I going to give this microphone to? Again, I'm not the worst singer I've ever heard in my life. In fact, I actually know music. I used to play at it. I don't know where Mark is. I don't want to play no more. I, I traded playing for the word of God. But if I go up there and I say to Mark, uh, Brother Mark, Brother Polonese, tonight's your night. You're going to preach and teach tonight. I'm sure Brother Mark will look and say, you know what? I don't want it. Even if he got a word, I don't want that. <laughs> because... That's what God gave to me the same way he's given musicality to him. However, as an example, my musical examples, even, even my wife, I'll tell her, I'll provoke her to sing runs at home. She'll do a run. Just do one little run. I'm going to show him by example. Just do something. Huh? And I'll walk away and say, yeah. <clears throat> I'm walking into the other room and she'll say, honey, No. You missed that note right there. You know, you did. <laughs> you missed it there. <laughs> and I'll tell her, but you can't write it. <laughs> I can write the music. <laughs> All right, what is, what is the point there? I'm motivated to be an example. I would love to do it more, but for what I have been called to do, 
I have to, now go back to what Paul said, make full proof of your ministry. So what does God call me to do? So I use the musical motivation to say, as if to say, Lord, as it is for them, do it in me where I am. Does that make sense? And then that way, you will never step out of your lane. You will stay committed to who the Lord has called you to be. How many of you know God has called you to be something? Now, who in here has enough courage to say, I'm still working on what that something is? Glory be to God. That's what we're here for. That's what go time does. It's going to strengthen you and empower you to become the best example you can be based on what God is doing in your life. And then he'll change the image of your life. He'll change the influences in your life. And he'll ultimately change the integrity of your life. Everything about you will change when you commit to being exactly who and what God has called you to be. If your gift is preaching, preach. If it's teaching, teach. If it's service, serve. There's nothing wrong with being a servant. Join hospitality. Smile. Be glad to tell people welcome to the house of the Lord. Do your part wherever your part is. You never hear your eye talking about I'm mad at the feet so I ain't seeing today. You never hear your ears talking about I'm mad at the eyes so I ain't hearing today. No, no. Your body is a perfect example of being uh, the perfect work of going everywhere. My feet can't go where my brain doesn't say go. Do your job where you are. And don't be jealous. Don't hate on anyone else. There's a whole lot of moments in the body of Christ. In my father's house are many mansions. Jesus said, I'm telling you because I know that's how it works. And what I'm giving to you, piece by piece, is the ministry of go time. And I pray that you've been blessed. Take it. Celebrate the man of God tonight. The ministry of go time. Come on, let's thank God for the word. Strong meat, strong meat that encourages us and pushes us and helps us to do our part in the kingdom. Well, at this time, there may be one tonight, whether you're watching virtually or in-house, you don't know the Lord as your personal savior. This is our goal time right now. This is our invitation to you. We're taking this message to you to invite you to the kingdom, to invite you to accept Christ as your personal savior. Type AC in the comments, or you can even make your way to the altar here if that's you tonight. All you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you can be saved. If you wanna connect with this ministry, as a member, you say, I want to be a member of changing a generation. We want you to come tonight or type CE in the comments. If you want to make a decision tonight to return back home to where you first knew God and where he loved you and you loved him. If you're in a backslidden condition, I promise you, if you make a decision to come back to him tonight, he'll receive you with wide open arms. If that's you tonight, come to my the altar or you can type RT in the comments. If you want to connect with this ministry under watch care, you're away from your home, but you need a church home while you're here in Georgia, type WC in the comments. And if you want to receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit, less of you and more of him, we sang about it tonight. You're saying, Holy Spirit, you're welcome. You're welcome in my mind. You're welcome in my body. You're welcome to take over my spirit so there's more and more of you and less and less of me. If that's you tonight, make your way to the altar or type HS in the comments. Come on, let's pray together as we pray for a decision maker. Lord, how we thank you for your word. Lord, we're obedient to your word tonight. You told us to go and so now, God, we're going. We're gonna take your message everywhere. And for my brother, or sister who's listening tonight they've heard your word and you've touched their hearts God I pray that you'll put it in their spirit 
to come tonight, to make a decision for you tonight, to accept you as their savior, to connect with this ministry, whatever the need is, whatever the desire is, God, allow them to hear you clearly so that they can make a decision. And God, we speak confidence right now. We bind fear, God. Take away the fear and fill them up with faith. It's by your name we pray and we say amen. Our worship team is coming, but there's an email address on the screen. Yes, and there's a number you can text. Come on, meet us here. Meet me here. Jesus is here for you tonight. Whatever you stand in need of, he says, just come and lay it at the altar. Can y'all build that up and say, I surrender? Come on, really strong in the house. I surrender. I surrender. I give it all. Lay it down tonight. Where are you at? Lay it down. Come on and lay it down and let, let it, go. it go. Let it go. Say that one more time. I surrender. Come on, everybody. I surrender. I surrender. I give it all to you. I give it all to you. Somebody came tonight to lay it down. To let it all go. tonight we want to thank God because I was just informed that we had one added to the church online tonight Hallelujah. come on and give God praise for you bless you my brother and my glory, sister glory. thank you for your decision we will be in touch with you but we give God praise for our sister that has come tonight and the Lord says to you tonight is going to end a thing something ends tonight and it begins while we're preaching so father in the name of jesus lift your hands high as you can i pray for my sister now lord you said that you've been declared the end from the beginning so now lord i speak a new freshness into her even as she has brought whatever it is that brought her to the altar i thank you tonight that a freshness is coming on her father i give you praise right now because this is the end of that moment thank you it's being done while i'm asking you for it give her a sign a miracle and a wonder by sun up that something marvelous and supernatural has happened in her life by the strong by the strong name of jesus i pray let the whole church say yes and amen come on and clap your hands for my sister come on and clap 
like it's you at the altar. And it's your time for a newness. Go ahead and let it go. Come on, one more time. I surrender all. Say, I, I surrender. Come on and clap. Give Jesus praise all over the room. Ministry is taking place at the altar. I believe Holy Spirit is moving on the altar of people's hearts. He's moving in your home, wherever you're watching right now. If you teach the word, Jesus said, if I be lifted up, that we're in that season of resurrection, it's the drawing season. And there is somebody's heart is still being drawn to the Lord Jesus even after the ministry of the word. Well, God bless you all. We give God praise for you. We're getting ready for Sunday because our overseers are going to be in the house as well. Amen. Amen. Yes, our overseers are going to be in the house this Sunday and then the following Sunday, as we've already announced, we'll be, be with you for Palm Sunday. Ladies, remember Palm Sunday. We're in our That's denim it. and pearls because it is still Women's History Month. So I want y'all to dress up and be as pretty as you want to be. And we're going to take a picture at the end to show our unity. And let me also say happy Women's History Month to all of the ladies in the room, even that are watching virtually. I affirm women in ministry. Amen. Yes, you do. And, uh, not only we that. thank God for you. I thank God for our history that women have wrought us. You can't just do it on one side of the gender. We need one another. And let me also commend our women's ministry for going forth. Changing women have been going forth during our prayer time on Tuesday Amen. mornings. Our step call Amen. has been led by women. So we're grateful to God for that. We are grateful to God for that. And women, you know, we had a meeting on this Saturday. We did another one on Sunday, but I want y'all to get pumped up. It's Women's History Month this month, but June is our Women's Month, and we're about to show out. Come on. Y'all know what's coming up. Elder Connie Abraham is our chair. Sister Jan is our co-chair. We've got some good stuff planned for you. We're going to raise some good money. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. It's going to be a good time. Check your emails, ladies. It's a whole outline of what's happening. Worship team, y'all get on my email list because y'all don't not on it. Check that, and we'll make sure that you know what's happening as well. Lifting your hands now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all. We can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us all. Unto him be glory in this church, your home, your school, your job, wherever you may be. Let all the people of God say yes and amen. God bless you. God keep you. We love you, virtual church. Have a wonderful night. Go in the peace of the Lord. It's go time. Thank you for worshiping with us. Pastor Rob, Lady J, Overseers Bishop, and Pastor D, pray you continue to connect with Changing, as well as share this service with your social media followers and invite your family and friends to connect with us every Tuesday night for Word Explosion at 7.30 p.m. and each Sunday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. CAGNOW.org. We want to remind you of all the ways you can donate and support Changing a Generation. To make a donation by mobile giving, message CAG to 54244 or cash app, dollar sign CAG now, or a Givelify app. Click and search for Changing a Generation for Gospel Baptist Church. Use our secured website, CAGnow.org, or mail to Changing a Generation for Gospel Baptist Church, Post Office Box 360368, Decatur, Georgia 30036. To stay connected for all updates, you can text CAG now to 22828 to sign up for eBlast or visit cagnow.org.